Hi, and welcome to the Eczema Podcast, where you'll learn tips, products, and natural eczema remedies from Abby, registered holistic nutritionist and founder of eczemaconquerors.com. Stay tuned as she invites experts in the field. Here's your host of the Eczema Podcast, Abby. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Eczema Podcast. This is part two of our podcast continued from last week on how dental issues can affect your skin. So it's so interesting this episode. Dr. Kelly shares all about how hidden dental infections can affect your skin. Everything from root canals to gum disease, silver fillings, wisdom teeth cavitations, so many things that you probably would never guess can affect your skin. And did you know that we also talked about how 45% of the oral bacteria in your mouth is also located in your gut. So they really overlap and it's just such an interesting episode. It's very eye-opening. Check out part one if you haven't had the chance to yet. It's also on iTunes and Spotify. I hope the information helps you today and thank you for watching. I would also love to touch upon some of the studies that you shared with me um, in regards to how, um, you know, dental issues and the link with the eczema or even some of the you know filling removals uh, I think the studies that you showed me I would love to dive into that sure well w- one of the things that I found in the studies and I don't have them up in front of me right this second but one of the things that I appreciated about them was they didn't come out last year right I mean these were uh, 10 15 even more years old um, which I love right it's like this is nothing new. We, we've been looking at these connections, whether it's um, keep, keeping in mind, like my, my, uh, my center of focus is oral health. So, you know, as I'm looking at studies, of course, I'm interested in what's that connection between oral health and dermatological issues? What's the connection between oral health and pregnancy complications? What's the connection between oral health and cardiovascular health, right? I mean, we, we now know conclusively uh, that poor periodontal health, so gum disease, right, or infected root canal teeth or infected jaw bones from areas where teeth were extracted and it didn't heal well, which we call a cavitation lesion, any of those infections cause, not are, not are associated with, they cause heart attacks and strokes right? Bale and Donine uh, had a study that came out in 2016 conclusively where they, they are now able to state, you know, direct cause and effect. That's and huge. So it's amazing, right? And, it, and, and sadly, I mean, gum disease is still looked at like, eh, you know, so I got a little pink in the sink when I brush and floss, you know, what's the big deal? Or worse yet, uh, you know, there's somewhere between 20 and 30 million root canals done in America every year. And we just consider that normal to leave a dead body part attached to our jawbone. And unfortunately, every single one of those teeth, like we're talking tens of millions per year, will be a source of chronic infection for that human being. And they won't know it. That's definitely really devastating. Um, And that Netflix show, I don't know if you saw it. I think it was called Root Cause, all about how it can affect the skin, uh, well, the whole the whole part of the body and um you know after that root cause netflix show came out um my holistic dentist actually said that he was going to stop taking he was going to stop doing root canals because of that show so that's how huge it was oh it's amazing yeah and 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 i've actually uh connected with the the guy who made the the movies in australia amazing and just you know what a neat fellow i mean what a blessing really that he shared his story through his art medium that, you know, I mean, that's how he makes his livings is making films. Um, but that was pretty brave, you know, and it was, it was brave of all of the physicians, Dr. Nunnally, Dr. Levy, um, you know, to get Dr. Tennant to get on there and share the truth. Um, you know, definitely. Um, I know there was a petition to have the, the show taken off of Netflix, but just in case people haven't seen the show, it was basically about how, one guy had a lot of health problems and he went to all these kinds of, 
you know, different types of doctors, Eastern medicine, Western medicine, naturopaths, you know, you name it, he tried everything and then nothing helped until he actually found out it was the root canal and he took it out and then he got better. Yeah. I mean, great story, right? And then he also discovered that, um, well, I thought it was interesting about how vital of a life he lived prior to having his tooth trauma and then the subsequent root canal. Um, but after getting his root canal issue resolved and experiencing some level of health improvement, he then came to find out that he had also had some cavitations formed where his wisdom teeth had been removed. And you, you look at in, in our country, like people are taking out wisdom teeth every single day just, just because, right? Like, uh, and, 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 and to be clear, sometimes it's an appropriate choice to get wisdom teeth out of your mouth if you have no room and it's causing other health issues. But we have to be thoughtful in terms of how do we help the body heal so that bacteria doesn't get trapped in the jawbone. Uh, and, yeah. and that's that's a big issue as well. So anyways, phenomenal movie. And I will say you can still uh, purchase it on, on uh, iTunes and probably some other places. But if you Google Root Cause, you'll find the movie. Um, I mean, I bought it and, and own it. Um, it's, it's powerful stuff. It's, it's unfortunate that, you know, the American Dental Association uh, was definitely involved in getting that taken down. Um, I've seen their, their marketing material that they emailed to all of their members where they told them, you know, we need for you as members to tell people that that movie is, you know, not true. Uh, it's just brainwashing, you know. Mm-hmm. Nobody, they just, they want dentists to close their eyes and act like they're blind to what they see every day, which is chronic infection around dead teeth. And I think a lot of people are unaware of that. Um, Maybe we can also, maybe you can also uh, share a little bit about, you know, what, what is the issue with root canals? Because I think, you know, there are some people listening who might not actually know what the, the issues are with getting a root canal. And You know, I had also had one person on uh, Instagram who messaged me and said, I have had three root canals. Could that be the cause of my skin issues? Because she actually has, uh, you know, quite a lot of skin issues. So, you know, maybe uh, I would love it if you could just share with the viewers, what's the issue with root canals? Why can it cause so much, you know, infection in the body? Yeah. So it's an interesting thing. And, and, you know, I would encourage people, um, to actually go to my Instagram account and be, you know, fo- please follow me at the at Blodgett Dental Care. Um, I have put together a number of visuals which show how, I mean, we're, we're used to, when we think of teeth, right? We think of like, you know, Abby, you give me a big smile. I see your beautiful teeth. And everything that we can see in our mouths for the most part is the enamel of the tooth, which is ridiculously hard and for the most part, impervious to bacteria, right? The problem is when a tooth gets infected or let's say it's traumatized and the nerve is either dead or in a hyperinflamed state and the dentist says, you need a root canal, so they drill it open and pull the nerve out, um, the entirety of your root is porous, right? And those pores are somewhere on the nature of five to 10 times larger in diameter than the size of the bacteria that live under the gums. So as soon as you no longer have an immune system attached to that tooth because you've drilled out, you know, your nerves, your blood supply, and your lymphatic drainage for the tooth, it becomes, you know, just a, it's like coral, right? Think of it like coral where, you know, bacteria can easily just migrate their way inside the tooth they you know, get into the nooks and crannies inside it and make their way up to the tip of the root. And then what we typically see on, on dental x-rays is an area of darkness around the roots. Now, to be clear, uh, let's say you had a root canal therapy performed five years ago and your tooth doesn't hurt at all and you don't see anything different uh, around that tooth on a dental x-ray, it is still infected, Right. It, it, it would be an indication that the lymphatic drainage around your tooth is working well and your immune system is doing a good job of keeping that infection managed. Uh, 
The vast majority, however, are going to ultimately not only start showing symptoms in the mouth, but you may be suffering for 10, 20, 30 or more years due to other energetic imbalances and or infectious issues somewhere else in your body, right? So those bacteria that your lymph drains away goes directly into your cardiovascular system. And if, if the types of bacteria that you're more exposed to, um, if your immune system sees those as being more like um, connective tissue or the basement membrane of tissues or what have you, and you start creating, you know, experiencing an inflammatory response in your skin, again, you know, it's directly related, but we don't think of teeth, right? Yeah, we never think of the teeth. We don't think of the teeth. I mean, it's, it is sadly, sadly common um, that it's simply not part of a physician's or a naturopath's or a chiropractor or you name the health specialty. It's generally not a part of their health questionnaire. Um, you know, I've talked with a lot of other uh, complementary healthcare providers and traditional MD physicians and probably the deepest dive I have seen in terms of questioning is, do you have a dentist, you know, which tells you nothing about whether or not they've had root canals, they've been exposed to metals, uh, they've had their wisdom teeth out, they've had, you know, orthodontic uh, treatment where they were exposed to metal. I mean, you know what I mean? So it's, there's not a lot of uh, quality information being shared, which turns out it's important to understand those things if we want to understand the whole health of a human. So if someone does have a root canal, would you suggest that they remove it in order to get the infection out or what would be the right approach? Yeah, good question. So, and just, just so I can share kind of my perspectives, um, I tend not to look at things in terms of a right or a wrong approach. I tend to look at it in terms of a, what are your health goals, right? If someone's telling me that, you know, I would like to give my body its very best chance to be at its best state of health for the majority of my lifetime or all of my lifetime. Then we have to have a conversation about having dead tissue still in your body that's infected. Um, we have to have that same conversation around toxic metals or, you know, crowns that clearly don't fit well, where it's just teeming with bacteria underneath them. Um, so if a person's goal is optimal health, we have to talk about getting rid of all of those materials uh, and or bacteria. So in that case, you know, if you had root canals, it would include removing the dead teeth in the mouth. Now, oh, go ahead. Oh, uh, yeah, I was supposed to get a root canal too, but because um, I, I had a dead tooth, but uh, because that root cause uh, Netflix show came out just in time, um, my holistic dentist said he didn't do root canals anymore. And so we just opted for a extraction instead. And I'm so glad that we did, but yeah. I've been reading for years and years that root canals have led to a lot of health issues and just like so many issues overall. And so like, I knew I didn't want a root canal anyway. Um, yeah. but I also researched a lot about implants and like the type of implants, but I also recently saw that Dr. Jess posted about how someone removed um, their uh, root canal tooth and then a lot of their health issues got so much better, like their hypothyroidism disappeared, their migraines disappeared. And so I thought that was just so amazing. Oh, yeah. I mean, we, we had a, a young woman in just this Monday uh, and we had re removed her root canal teeth about six months ago. And she was back in so that we could, you know, give her a, a removable prosthetic uh, appliance. And it was such a great story. She shared with us that she had just seen her naturopath. And she said, my Hashimoto's is in remission. Wow. And I, you know, and I would look at it from the perspective of maybe, maybe you never really had quote unquote Hashimoto's. Maybe you never had a disease. You just had a chronic inflammatory response do dead tissue that never should have been in your head to begin with. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. And I mean, we see that all the time, you know, some, let's say your tooth happens to be on the thyroid meridian. 
And we understand that when you kill a tooth and fill it with this, you know, gutta percha material, the energy flow through those meridians decreases significantly. So it would, it would definitely make sense if the organs and tissues that are connected along those energy meridians become less functional. So tell me more about this, uh, the meridians. It sounds so interesting. So each tooth has a meridian. It's connected to the part of the body. So different tooths, I'm guessing, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, different parts of the teeth are connected to, like you mentioned, the thyroid meridian. So are there any other meridians that are connected to like skin health? Um, yeah, I mean, basically, if, if you Google um, dental meridian, like dental energy meridian chart, something like that, right? There are tons of them out there. They're all going to say the same things, right? These teeth are connected along these energy meridians. Um, you know, I mean, if we look at traditional Chinese medicine, you've known this stuff for like millennia, <laughs> you know, it's, it's nothing new. We've just in the last 150 years or so conveniently ignored it all. Um, but yeah, I mean, there, there are organ systems, skin being part of it. Um, and you just have to like look through it. Matter of fact, we have a video, one of the videos that we have um, for a guy named Colin on our Instagram story um, or our, our, not our story, but our, the posts that we, that we've created tells his story of how the skin and the connective tissue of his right knee one day just all of a sudden blew up. You know, he just had this unexplained severe pain in a joint that prior to this, it had had an, uh, an ACL replacement or some type of meniscus tear or something like that, but it, it might have made him more prone to inflammation there. But the tooth that he had in his mouth that was severely abscessed, that he, you know, he was unaware of that, they were directly connected, right? So get the tooth out, knee goes back into health, right? And it's really a helpful diagnostic tool or at least an educational tool to offer to our patients, this energy meridian chart, because when we look at their, let's say we pull up their panoramic dental x-ray where you can see all of the teeth. Here's where we see issues. You know, you've got a root canal here, metal fillings here, what have you. Um, and then we look at the energy meridian chart. They start to see their own health story presenting itself. And it's shocking how many times people say, gosh, that's right. I had a root canal in 2016 in September. And in December of 2016, I was diagnosed with, um, you know, a cardiovascular issue or something like that. Right. And it's amazing. Well, I'm actually, I actually just pulled up the meridian chart right now and I'm looking at it. It's, it's pretty fascinating. There's like different meridians that are, you know, different tooths that are connected to like the heart, the thyroid, the adrenals, the lungs, the liver, kidney. Right. Wow. Yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah, I can, it's, yeah, I'm definitely going to take a look at this. And uh, like you mentioned, anyone can just Google the dental meridian chart and they can find it. Yeah. Uh, I also just want to quickly read out the headlines for some of the studies that you sh you shared with me so that our readers can, they can always Google it. They can look it up on PubMed or, you know, on the internet. So one of the studies you sent me was that uh, odontogenic focal infection could be partly involved in the pathogen uh, pathogenesis of atopic dermatitis as exacerbating factor. Another one you sent me was that improvement of eczema, uh, eczema symptoms after removal of amalgam-like metal in the alveolar bone. Yeah. And the other one you sent me was dental infection associated with numular, numular eczema as an overlooked focal infection. Yeah. Super interesting. It is. And the mouth is full of focal infections given the things that we do to people. It's, you know, it's yeah. crazy. Just as a background for our listeners. So, Basically, any infection, like whether there's a cavity, a root canal, any sort of extraction, that basically signifies that there's an infection in the tooth and that, you know, we need to clean it up and that the infection can travel into the body, into the blood, the lymph system, and also cause atopic dermatitis. Mm -hmm. Isn't it amazing? That's crazy. 
Yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's also kind of interesting. You don't even have to have a root canal on a tooth. Let's say you had a kind of a deep filling and, uh, you know, the nature of how that filling meets the tooth is such that bacteria chronically build up around it and it's below the gum line. You can't clean it. You know, you're going to be exposed to that stuff every time you eat, every time you brush and floss, it gets reintroduced into your blood supply. So it's, I cannot stress the importance of um, the value of establishing and maintaining a state of oral health where you not only do you not have um, like, are, do you have the right fillings and all that? But if you can prevent ever have to, having to have to have those things, that is the way to go, right? Nothing beats natural teeth. Yeah. So what happens if someone needs to get like a cavity or an extraction? Um, and the because it, it always signifies an infection. So what happens if those areas aren't cleaned out properly? I assume it happens often. Yeah. What all, happens if the infection stays there? Especially if, um, you know, someone plants an implant or puts a cavity uh, filling into an area where it's not clean properly. Yeah. You know, and I would say that I think the majority of dentists out there are doing the, you know, the very best job that they can with what, they're, uh, what they have at their disposal. Um, and I think, you know, I mean, I've worked with a lot of dentists over the years and people work hard. It's a, it's a challenging place to work, right? Um, you know, it, it's tricky. Um, we happen to use a lot of technology in our practice, things like ozone. Um, we have a number of different dental lasers and air abrasion systems and technologies that help us when, when a patient does have either decayed teeth or they have old mercury fillings that they want removed so that they're not chronically being exposed and um, all that. We want to put back something that mimics the tooth structure as much as possible, right? Um, we also want to treat the remaining tooth structure with as much tender loving care as absolutely possible. Um, and that's why we use things like air abrasion, lasers, ozone, uh, because we can leave it in a state of health balance as much as we can, right? Um, in our practice, we use a lot of ceramic restorations because it's inert. Uh, we don't want something that conducts, you know, heat and cold and all that. Uh, so that's like the, the vast majority of restorations that we use for teeth. And I, yeah, I heard that. Um, I think you have mentioned before that ceramic is the best material for both cavities and implants. Correct. Yeah. So we usually use um, zirconia implants. Not always, but you know, whenever we possibly can, uh, I prefer to use them. Uh, I will share just for those people who are interested. You know, part of the reason we don't always use zirconia implants is they're relatively newer to the dental market. I mean, they've only been around maybe not even ten years, whereas uh, titanium implants have been around for 50 years and we have a, a much greater variety of sizes of titanium. Uh, but for most, for most cases, right, we, we have the opportunity to use zirconia. Um, some dentists use zirconia for other dental restorations like crowns. I'm not a really a big fan of it because of it's, it's so hard. Uh, most patients I put it in like years ago, it just didn't feel like a tooth, right? So we use ceramics that mimic the feel um, and the aesthetic nature of teeth. So, yeah, I mean, we try to, we try to build back, um, you know, the human body as, as God created it as best as possible. So um, one other question I had was, um, you know, if someone does want to look into the infections that they have in their mouth, I, in my research, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I saw that x-rays don't really show the infections in the tooth after cavities or implants are in, but, um, at, but you can get a 3d cone beam scan and that'll take like a 3d image and you can see if there's infections in your mouth. Yeah, no, that's a great point. So, um, you know, to be sure, like the current state of two dimensional digital radiography is pretty excellent. I mean, there's, there's certain things you can see very well. 
there's certain things you're never going to see at all as well, you know, so um, a combination of different uh, diagnostic modalities, both two dimensional and three dimensional are very helpful. Um, one, we've had a cone beam system for 12 years and we're actually just preparing to get a brand new one because as you can imagine, right, in, in 12 years, the degree to which technologies have advanced is incredible. So we're excited about that. But um, even the system that we've had for 12 years, the quality of what we are able to see is, is incomparable to two dimensional. It's so much better uh, because you can see things three dimensionally. Now, one thing I like to be really clear with, with our patients about is you cannot diagnose infection from an x-ray. We can, we can comment as to whether uh, the bone looks more or less dense, right? It looks more white or more dark, um, but we can't say that it's technically infected unless we actually clean things up and send it to a DNA lab and diagnose what, what was living there, right? So let's say it's a cavitation in the jawbone. Um, I can look at it and I can see, yeah, geez, it sure looks like the outline of your wisdom tooth is still present. It's much darker, which would indicate the bone didn't heal well. Um, we're going to, you know, if you want to clean that up, we can do so, but we're going to send that to a DNA lab to verify that, in fact, it was an infected area. Because our jawbone and, and teeth, if they're in good health, they shouldn't have bacteria inside them. Mm. I completely agree with that. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, I know for a lot of people listening, they're going to be like, wow, that's a lot of work to, you know, look back at the infections and see like what is, you know, what is in your mouth and what's still there. And I'm sure that a lot of people probably have, you know, infections, maybe more than they think. Yeah, it's, it's, it's true. And I think that, you know, um, People of my parents' generation, you know, maybe in their 60s and 70s, um, when they were kids, you know, they kind of had this unfortunate uh, crossroads of processed foods and high sugar containing foods starting to increase very highly in the 1950s and 60s. And, and, and then through my generation, 70s and 80s, you know, it's like it just kept getting worse. And the solution hasn't been, well, let's, let's consider what we're actually putting down our GI tract. It's, eh, you know, eat what you're going to eat. We're just going to do the drill it and fill it approach. Um, and the, the sad part is, is that the, the, you end up paying the price for that, you know, 20, 30, 40 years down the road uh, for a lot of people when they're looking at, um, in, in their 60s or 70s, they're getting ready to retire and their teeth are starting to fall apart. And there ends up being this major shift in what we have to do to help people be able to keep smiling, keep chewing, uh, reduce inflammatory risk. And of course, at the same time in their life, their immune systems, not for all people, but for some, uh, is going to start to decrease uh, oftentimes, their physicians, if they're more of a traditional Western approach, are trying to put them on, uh, you know, different medications, and most of those shut off the saliva, right? So it's there's a lot to consider in terms of how do I attain my best state of predictable health, and how do I maintain that over time? Um, and it is a process. You're absolutely right, Abby. I mean, it's there's a lot to consider. Uh, my encouragement for people is start as early as possible, right? Um, you do yourself such a favor to think about how do I want to manage? Let's, let's say you're 25 years old and you have 20 mercury fillings in your mouth and you're just getting started in your career and you're like, geez, I don't you know, know if I can invest in all of that at once. That's Okay you know, at least create an understanding of where you are currently and chart a course so that maybe 10 years down the road or 20 years down the road, you, you've done the work of cleaning as much of that up, helping your body to detox. Uh, you know, there, there's no just one way to do it, right? I'm going to be asked a lot of questions, but your, what are your thoughts on uh, getting mercury fillings removed? 
because I've heard some some people have said that it actually creates more mercury in your system because of the extraction, like the way, depending yeah. on how it's extracted, it can make the mercury worse in your body or it can actually help it. Yeah, that's it, absolutely true. Um, so I, I may have mentioned earlier, maybe I didn't, that uh, both my, uh, my partner here, Dr. Nish and I are uh, members of the International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology. Um, about maybe four years ago, they came out with a defined protocol, which includes a number of technologies that we then chose to invest in for our patients uh, so that we can remove safely the mercury that is in teeth and other metals for that matter. I mean, we, we follow the protocol when we're removing anything that's not uh, of, of the patient's nature, right? If it's not their own tissues, let's protect them, right? Um, so yeah, it's called the SMART protocol, right? It stands for safe, uh, mercury amalgam removal technique. So there's a lot of steps to doing that properly and, you know, we're happy to do it. Our patients are ecstatic that we offer that. Um, but you know, I mean, gosh, when I was in dental school and, and probably I would say we had less awareness of the risks of, at least I did, you know, and, and my instructors did, the, the risk of uh, mercury exposure, you know, a lot of us who've been doing this for years, even though we might have been protecting the patient reasonably well, maybe not perfectly, but, you know, in my practice, we've always isolated their teeth with a non-latex dam so that they're not swallowing any of this, high-speed suction, things like that. Um, really helpful for the patient, but for the pro- practitioner, Right. I mean, how many dentists are exposed to thousands of mercury uh, treated teeth every year, right? So it's a little bit of a dangerous thing to be doing if you're not uh, protecting your team and yourself along with your patients. So it's it, it's a critical thing to consider. It's it's very toxic stuff. Yeah, I definitely agree. So I had one reader question that said, "Is it true that people with eczema get more cavities?" It's hard to say. I, I suspect that the risk, and based on the science, um, it sounds like it sounds to me, based on what I've read, that the two are correlated. Like if somebody's experiencing eczema, the likelihood of them experiencing uh, concurrent tooth decay is highly likely. And uh, I'm just going to read off one of the studies you sent me. It said that, you know, there were 13 cases of numular eczema and uh, there was widely distributed skin lesions. Um, After they had, uh, after um, they had the dental treatment, uh, 11 of the patients saw that their skin lesions partially or completely improved after the dental treatment. Yeah. So they found that the, the, the dental infection might have been aggravating it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and it's, yeah I think it's great, right? It just, it, it, it supports the notion that everything is connected. Mm-hmm. And another, uh, another question that someone asked is, um, once a tooth is removed, how long does it take to see the difference in eczema? And I know everyone's going to be different, but what, from your personal experience, how long has it taken to see symptoms disappear? Uh, yeah, no, great question. Um, what I can share is the stories of our patients, right? Uh, because as you mentioned, the, the, the variance there can be significant. So, you know, we have had patients where, let's say in the case of removing um, a titanium implant where they were sensitive to the nickel. Um, within a week, their skin was back to normal, right? Wow. Like, did they have eczema or atopic dermatitis? Uh, yes. Wow. In the, in the two patients I'm, I'm thinking of, that, that was what was going on. And, you know, if it's chronic infection due to root canals, again, the symptoms can be quite vast. Um, and it's possible that, I mean, I've also seen patients where we took out their teeth, their health improved, but they still had other symptoms, right? Cause it's not like the reason that their teeth failed or the health, the health nature around their teeth failed had something to do with their overall health balance, right? 
So there's unfortunately there's no silver bullet, as you know, um, but there are wise choices to be made, right? Uh, wh- number one, eat a healthful diet, drink a lot of water, get good sleep. Um, the minute we start ve- veering off of that path, um, you know, drinking Mountain Dew uh, for three hours a day, or it could be your, you know, oh, I love my iced Starbucks mocha that I sip on for four hours at work, right? That is going to, you know, start blowing up your gut health as well as your teeth. Um, and then once you start drilling and filling in the teeth, the things you put in there are going to have effect in other places in the body. So we just want to be respectful of how we were designed to uh, live and eat, you know? I completely agree. Okay. So one last question from a reader. They asked, sure. what is the relation between gum grafts and eczema? Good question. You know, I, I'm not aware of any, um, science on that. And I would just to clarify, you know, when we say gum grafts, that could be, um, there are so many different types of gum grafts, right? Like let, let's say for instance, a person had a gum graft where the surgeon, uh, removed a portion of, of actual gum tissue from the roof of their own mouth. And they then put that material in another place to cover up a root surface, you know, try to cover up that root for the the tooth. Um, The likelihood of there being any immunological response to that is next to nothing because you're not going to respond to your own tissue. However, in the last 20 years, the percentage of dentists who use um, either cadaver tissue, so it's from another body, or they use something from a pig or a cow, it's pretty high, right? And I mean, I get the advantages to that because who wants to get their gums cut up, right? On the roof of their mouth. Um, it, but, you know, when we put something foreign in the mouth, there's always going to be a chance that your body may respond to that unfavorably if you have an immunological response to it. So I don't, I don't have any hard science, but I mean, I'm just kind of speaking in a general sense that there are definitely ways in which we can approach gum grafts that have the potential for initiating an, uh, an immune response. So it sounds like the main reason and the main cause of uh, the, the skin flaring is really due to either A, uh, having infections in the body um, and not having, sorry, infection the, in the, in the um, tooth area, which moves into the lymph and the blood and circulates into the body. And yep. the second one is, um, the skin can flare up because we're putting foreign objects into the teeth, which we're not, we're not really supposed to have, whether it's the metal, the nickel, the silver fillings and our body reacts to it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's all foreign, right? Mm-hmm. That's yeah. right. So do you have any last words or last tips of uh, last um, uh, words of advice for people who might be, you know, being affected by this, who might have questions and just want to get help with, you know, dental issues and their skin? Sure. Um, Well, I would offer a hope that, um, you know, there, how would I, how do I want to state this? Um, Everything is connected. If your skin is reacting you know, again, it's, that should be telling you about something within your energetic and health system being out of balance. Um, Your teeth are connected to the rest of your body. If you have had anything done in your mouth from sealants to fillings, to crowns, to implants, to um, you name it, um, all of those have had an effect on your body, your gastrointestinal tract, um, you know, so under, start understanding that everything's connected and that as you start to sense that, you know, I think there's a connection here for me, I would encourage people to pursue it, right? Um, of course, I would encourage people to like follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Um, part of my commitment now that I've started this and, and been doing it for the last year of sharing information uh, and patient stories is to continue doing that because I realize just how little 
um, valid information there is out there about the connectedness of the oral health system to the systems of the rest of their body. And I don't like to, to chop them apart to say, well, the oral health is different. It just happens to be one area of focus, which, you know, that's my area of focus. But, you know, clearly the teeth and the gums and every other part of the mouth is connected to the rest of your body. So in order to get your gut to heal, your skin to heal, your thinking to heal, like it, it all has to be respected, right? Yeah, I definitely agree. Okay, so um, if people want to find you or get a hold of you or um, maybe come see you for an appointment, where can they find you? Yeah, so uh, our website is www.blodgettdentalcare.com. Um, last name is B as in boy, L-O-D-G-E-T-T, blodgettdentalcare.com. Um, it's at Blodgett Dental Care on uh, Instagram, Blodgett Dental Care. You can follow us on Facebook. Uh, and if you have questions, you know, feel free to email us or, you know, particularly if you're interested in flying to Portland, Oregon, it's a great place to come and stay. Uh, we have people coming from, you know, all over the United States and out of the country now who, I guess I would say with whom our approach greatly resonates. And it's been a real gift to serve those people. Uh, but they can email us at info at bdcpdx.com. And if people, um, I think I saw somewhere on your social media where you mentioned that if people want to get a second opinion, they can also do distant consultations. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. We, you know, for a fee, we we definitely offer that. What's so lovely about technology these days is you can either send us a CD or a thumb drive or send a, a cone beam scan, uh, you know, via like uh, Dropbox or something of that nature. And we do that frequently. It's so awesome to be able to connect with people. And, you know, honestly, most people who end up doing that decide that they would prefer to come here and have us care for them. Um, they just find that the energy of my team and myself, you know, is pretty loving and supportive. Um, and we're happy to do that. But, you know, if somebody just wants to get started down that path and get an assessment of, hey, here's what's going on with my oral health. Do you think this could be connected to this and that? Oh, absolutely. We'd, we'd love to be of service. Awesome. Thank you so much. And once again, it's so rare to find a dentist like yourself because, uh, you know, you're really holistic and there's not many dentists out there that really understand the link between you know, all these issues with skin issues and uh, dental issues as well. So I'm really glad you're able to share your knowledge today and uh, share your knowledge with, you know, everyone listening. And I know that everyone really appreciates that. So thank you so much, Dr. Kelly. Yeah. And thank you, Abby. Uh, keep, keep, keep up all the great work with what you're doing. It's awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to the Eczema Podcast and stay tuned for our next episode. If you like what you just heard, we hope you'll pass it along to your friends. Visit eczemaconquerors.com for more articles and tips. Thanks for listening.